Hello and welcome to another Magic Duels gameplay. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black cycling deck which features a lot of the new cards from Amon Cat. So the idea of the deck is that we're playing lots and lots of one mana cyclers in blue and black that we're basically always planning to cycle. And then we've got a bunch of payoff cards that reward us for cycling. We've got cards like Drakehaven that we can pay one whenever we cycle or discard to make a 2-2 Drake token with flying which can quickly get out of hand. And we've got other payoffs such as the Archfiend of Ifnir that puts minus one, minus one counters on all the opponent's creatures whenever we cycle. So we've got a few more of these kinds of payoff cards in the deck, but we'll discover them as we go along here. So let's get started with our one drops where we have yet another payoff card for cycling, which is Ruthless Sniper. So just a single black for a 1-2 that says whenever we cycle or discard a card, which is a templating use in all these payoff cards, which means not only cycling but also discarding a card some other way, for example with maybe a looter like Jay's Friend's Prodigy, we can also enable all these cards. So whenever we cycle or discard, we can pay a single generic mana, and if we do, we can put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. So this is great against one toughness creatures, but can also just shrink down the opposing creatures so we can maybe manage them more easily and maybe even block them with a sniper to prevent some damage. Then we also have a Fatal Push, just a nice cheap removal spell to buy us some time, take out those pesky smuggler copters that are still in magic duels. Then we get to one of the many cyclers, we've got Scarab Feast, which we're not really planning to cast ever, although I guess it does have text, so you can potentially exile three cards from a graveyard, but most of the time you're just gonna cycle this for single black, and that's all it's there for, and of course it's an instant which is relevant, as we'll get to in a second. Then we've got a Jay's Vrin's Prodigy, which I've already mentioned, so whenever we draw and discard we can also enable those synergies. And of course a great card by itself, and with all the cyclers it means we'll transform the Jay's pretty quickly, as we'll have plenty of cards in our graveyard, and then we get Jay's Telepath Unbound, that can shrink down opposing creatures, and we can also flash back a card from the graveyard, although most cyclers were not really planning to flash back, although there's a couple that we could flash back that let us draw some extra cards, but we'll get to those in a second as well. Then we have Sensor, which is great by itself as a 2 mana counter that counters anything unless the opponent pays a single mana, so great on turn 2, but also later in the game if the opponent is stuck on mana. And then we can also just cycle it for a single blue, so the opportunity cost is very low with this card, and in a cycling deck it's perfect. Then we also have a Compelling Argument, which same as Scarab Feast, we're only going to cycle in this deck for a single blue. Then we have Drakehaven, which is probably the best payoff card for cycling, just because making those 2-2s is very mana efficient for just a single mana, and they do add up very quickly. Then we've got Curator of Mysteries, another kind of payoff card for cycling. So by itself it's a 4 mana 4-4 four, four flyer, which is not bad. And whenever we cycle or discard we can scry one, which means we get to scry before drawing the card of the cycling, which is very relevant, so you can maybe scry land to the bottom that you see on top and then draw the card from the cycling instead of the other way around. And you can also cycle the Curator itself if you have to, although this is one of those cards that you prefer to just hard cast. Then there's Hieroglyphic Illumination, which is actually a very nice one because you can also cycle for single blue, this is a cycling deck after all, but casting it for 4 mana to draw 2 cards at instant speed is actually not bad. This is also one of the few cards that we can uh, flash back with our Jace Friends Prodigy once he transforms, because of course we can cycle this early, but then it's still relevant in the graveyard since you can flash it back to draw 2 cards, rather than those other cyclers that don't really have any relevant text. Then we have Disciple of the Ring, which is also a spicy one, so 5 mana for a 3-4 with a whole bunch of abilities that require you to pay one and exile an instant or sorcery from your graveyard in order to activate them, but thanks to all the cyclers in the early game you've got a whole bunch of instants and sorceries in your graveyard ready to go with the Disciple of the Ring. So this makes this a great card, and most of the time when you have Disciple of the Ring you want to wait until you have maybe 6 or 7 mana so you can use the ability a bunch of times to protect it from removal. 
because when it does resolve and stay in play, it's going to dominate the game. Then we've got Archfiend of Ifnir, another great payoff card for cycling and also a great card by itself since it's a 5 mana 5-4 five, flyer. You can also cycle it for 2 mana but this is another one of those cards you would prefer not to cycle but of course there are situations where you have to and then it's nice to have that ability. Then we have Jace Unraveler of Secrets, just a great card by itself and a nice curve topper in this kind of blue-black deck that's actually pretty similar to a control deck when you think about it. So just a nice card advantage engine that can also bounce creatures. Similarly, we have Obnixilus Reignited, which can also kill stuff and draw cards. And another interesting addition is Liliana Death's Majesty, which can make zombies and mill for two, which fuels some of our synergies. And then the minus three is actually also relevant, since you can maybe return one of those big cycling creatures that you cycled earlier, like the Sphinx or like the Demon. Then we have one spicy copy of Rise from the Tides, which puts a 2-2 zombie token into play tapped for each instant and sorcery in the graveyard, which of course with all those cyclers adds up very quickly. And then in the same vein we've got Cryptic Serpent, which is a 7 mana 6-5, but it costs 1 generic mana less to cast for each instant and sorcery in the graveyard. So in the early turns you can cycle a bunch of cards and then play the Serpent for maybe only 3 or 4 mana, and then later in the game he's only gonna cost double blue, which is a bargain for a 6-5. And then we also have a Never to Return to deal with Planeswalkers, which are a weakness of blue-black decks. And of course it also has Aftermath, so we can exile a card from a graveyard to make a 2-2 zombie token. And then the mana base, which is actually pretty interesting. We've only got 22 lands in a deck that's trying to cast 5 mana Planeswalkers. But of course the reason is that we have all those 1 mana cyclers, so those will find us a lot of lands. So we don't want to flood out and have too many lands. So that's why we only have 22. We've got 8 islands, 8 swamps, so lots of basics that come into play untapped, because we are going to be cycling a lot in the early turns. Then we've got two Sunken Hollow, which is going to come into play untapped most of the time. Same with Drowned Catacomb. And then two Submerged Boneyard, which always comes into play tapped. And we're playing these over Evolving Wilds, even though we could transform Jace faster with Evolving Wilds going to the graveyard. But I think we want the extra mana fixing and having the land produce both colors. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which looks quite good. This Rise from the Tide is a little ambitious perhaps, but if we get to 6 mana it's gonna be decent. And our opponent with a Dragon Skull Summit. And Swamp is not bad, so now we can play out our Ruthless Sniper turn 1. Next turn we'll have Sensor up, as well as the ability to cycle and maybe shrink something down. So let's see if the opponent has a turn 2 Smuggler's Copter here. Nope, Sulphur Falls tapped, so they might be on a Grixis control deck of some sort. Which means this Sensor might be pretty good. So let's hit for 1. And say go. So I don't think we want to cycle Scrap Feast here. Because we are going to hit our land drops here. And I would rather save them for fueling the Ruthless Sniper. And the plan here is to get to Liliana and try to get an advantage that way. Catalog, I'm gonna let resolve. Opponent can draw and discard, that's fine. No need to censor that. Opponent discards, alright. Green Warden of Morassa, so I think I know what they're up to. Probably a reanimator deck trying to get their creatures back from the graveyard, which is actually pretty funny because we have a Scarab Feast in hand which can exile them. So this might be one of those few matches where Scarab Feast is relevant. So let's attack for one. And now the question is do we play out the second Sniper? 
opponent probably has a bunch of sweepers in their deck since they do need to survive until turn 5 or 6 to cast their reanimation spells. So I think playing the sniper is probably not necessary. I would rather just keep up double sensor. So let's say go. Opponent with another catalog. This one I might have countered, but actually want the opponent to go for the reanimation spell since we can counter it here. But they have a tap land for turn 5. And I'm just still gonna say go. There's an Archfiend. So let's hit for one. And say go again. At some point we will start cycling just to hit our land drops. But I don't think we need to quite yet. So there's a Necromantic Summons. And I think this one I just want to censor instead of Scarab Feasting. So let's counter that. And now the question is, do we cycle the second censor end of turn? It's tempting because we do want to make sure to hit our land drops here. But I think I'm going to still hold on to it. Alright, there's a Cryptic Serpent, which we're relatively far from casting, so let's hit for one with the Sniper. And at this point I do think we want to play out our other Sniper, since I don't think our opponent's going to want to waste a turn casting a Sweeper at this point. So now we have a, a lot of different options. Ideally, your opponent puts a third creature in the graveyard that we can get with Scarab Feast. Instead, our opponent's hard casting a Noxious Gear Hulk, which we will promptly counter with our sensor. So I don't think we want to cycle our Scarab Feast here. Compelling argument, we can certainly cycle question is if we want to cycle it right now in case we hit land drop and land next turn. Um, can certainly start by attacking for two. I think we do cycle it right now just to try and hit our lands. And of course, it also makes our Serpent cheaper. Alright, there's an island, that's nice. So we could play the Serpent, but then I think we're tapped out. Yep, that costs 7. So I think we can play the Serpent next turn. Because I want to wait to exile our opponent's creatures in response to our animation spell. To get a nice bit of value. We could have Scarab Feasted and then cast the Serpent previous turn, but we want to wait for this exact scenario. So opponents targeting their Noxious Gear Hulk, and we are going to cast Scarab Feast on the opponent's graveyard and exiling their three creatures. Confirm. Does it work? It does. Necromantic summons Fizzles, and we're pretty happy campers. Alright, so now we have a bunch of options. We could cast Rise from the Tides with four instants or sorceries in the graveyard, but again that plays into the opponent's sweeper, which seems bad. So I think I would rather resolve a Planeswalker here, which is more difficult for the opponent to deal with. And we will play around the opponent's sensor, but I guess we can attack first with uh, snipers. And then we just make a zombie with Liliana. Could have cycled the Archfiend and then reanimated it with Liliana, but we can still do that next turn if we want to. So play Liliana, plus one. Make a zombie, put two lands in the graveyard, that's fine. So now our opponent needs to put another creature in the graveyard, and they have the pieces of the puzzle to do that. 
There's a Gaia's Revenge. All right. And they're going to be able to grab the Unlicensed Disintegration and the uh, Necromantic Summons from that. And there's, all right, another one. Enigma Drake is also interesting here. 5 4, power and toughness equal to the instants and sorceries. And we did kind of run out of cyclers here, so that could be a problem. Although I guess we can just cycle the Archfiend and then pay for the snipers to shrink it down. And then we can reanimate the Archfiend as well. So I think we can certainly attack with the zombie. And I don't think our opponent's gonna block. So they will fall to 9 here. Question is if we even care about our Liliana all that much. Since we could just play the Archfiend and the Serpent here I believe. Since, uh, alright, no, the Serpent costs 3 mana still, so we can't play both. So, let's see here. I think we do go with the Cycle Archfiend and then Reanimated plan. Could also draw into something relevant, of course. And I think we'll use our Swamps here. So, target that, target that. Pay 1... Day one. And draw into another cycler. Alright, so now we've got the Drake pretty much checked. So we could reanimate, but I think we want to keep plussing here. As that gives us an answer to the Gaia's Revenge that our opponent could reanimate. Didn't mill anything too relevant, so let's say go here. Had we cycled in our first main phase and found the illumination, we could have cycled again and then attacked for two extra damage. Question here is if we want to be that aggressive, so our opponent with a temper on the Liliana, that's fine. We'll put another instant in the graveyard for the Drake to potentially finish off our Liliana. But we do have the other cycler here, so we can cycle this. And then pay another two to finish off the drake. And there's nothing the opponent can do about it, since they can't counter cycling, since it doesn't use a stack. And it looks like that did the job. So... Pretty funny that we managed to exile the opponent's graveyard there with the Scarab Feast. Not something that comes up a lot, and there's another one. So we could attack for 6 here. We could play Rise from the Tides, make a whole bunch of zombies. But I think we just want to plus our Liliana. And attack for a whole bunch. I guess we should have attacked first. And then plus Liliana to play around Kozil extra turn. Dealing 2 damage at instant speed. Alright, so now we can play the Serpent, which has 5 toughness, so it survives even a Languish. And then I just want to hold on to the Scarab Feast to prevent any reanimation shenanigans. We knew our opponent had the Disintegration, so that's fine. Still have more than enough power in play to finish off the opponents if they don't have a sweeper. They do have a Yahani's Expertise, which is not the end of the world. Since we still have our Liliana going. Alright, so now we have also a Drake Haven. So plenty of options. I think we want to cast our Rise from the Tides now. Which means I don't think we want to reanimate anything. Could reanimate the Serpent, which again has 5 toughness, survives languish. But if we're going to be vulnerable to a Sweeper, 
Might as well just keep plussing our Liliana instead. And we can still keep up our Scarab Feast. So let's arise from the tides. Actually made another small mistake here. Should have plussed first since we do mill two with the Liliana. And we would have indeed hit two more instants and sorceries, which would have actually had a whole bunch more zombies in play, but of course our opponent is at three, so that's probably not going to be too irrelevant. So, does our opponent have anything? Nope. Alright, so, a little bit sloppy here, but we managed to get the victory. Unless our opponent has that Kozil extra turn. Alright, looks like they don't. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which doesn't look that great. We don't have any cheap cyclers besides the curator and too many expensive cards, so let's try another one. Well, five lands is also not gonna do it. Alright, I think this is by far the best hand we've had. So let's play a tapped hollow and say go. Next turn we can play sniper or fatal push. And then we can think about cycling the curator. All right, opponent has a nice one toughness creature for us to take out with our sniper. Which is the reason why you sometimes don't want to play the sniper unless you can cycle right away because that just exposes him to removal. So we could just not play the Sniper here, and I think we don't. Just to maybe make the opponent run out more one toughness creatures. And we couldn't cycle and pay the one mana here anyway, so might as well wait and do it all next turn. So we will not be using the Fatal Push here, unless our opponent goes all in on pump spells. And alright, that one has more than one toughness so we can fatal push that one and now we can play a sniper cycle and pay even though i would like to keep the curator just to hard cast it next turn but we also have a jace so i want to try and stabilize the board before we play the jace so we can start drawing more cards and Illumination is also not bad, we can just hard cast that next turn if the opponent doesn't present anything worth shrinking down. Opponent seems to be mono green, so we do need to keep the Primal Bellow in mind. And they might have a bunch of one toughness creatures that they don't want to cast here. So they go with Lampold Pacifist which can potentially transform into the Butcher. And a little awkward with our cycling deck that cycling doesn't satisfy the Werewolf Clause since we're not actually casting a spell, we're just cycling it. So I think we do just want to main phase hard cast this so that the uh, Pacifist doesn't transform and so that we hit our land drops for our Planeswalkers. And the opponent still isn't incentivized to play out their one toughness creatures, but of course we don't have any cyclers left, opponent doesn't know that. So if we just get to untap with only a pacifist in play, our planeswalkers are going to be pretty great. Opponent plays a looping prototype, which means the pacifist can attack. But we're still at 18. And a duskwash recruiter as well. So we'll just take the three. And now we have to decide which planeswalker to run out there. We could Liliana and then get back our Curator of Mysteries, which sounds pretty nice. Could also just run out a Cryptic Serpent, which might just be better, since then we have a blocker for the opponent's creatures and then we can start playing our Planeswalkers. And if the opponent kills a Serpent, we can reanimate that with the Liliana as well. So yeah, let's just run out the Serpent and say go. Now if the opponent attacks, then that means they probably have a Pump Spell. 
They also have this rogues passage, which means our planeswalkers aren't necessarily safe. So if this one doesn't trigger with planeswalkers using their abilities, it's only instants and sorceries. So a few options. We could play Jace and bounce one of the opponent's creatures, or we can just play Liliana and reanimate our curator, get value right away, which I think is better. So let's play out Liliana. and reanimate our curator and I don't think we want to be attacking with our serpent yet if the opponent spends their entire turn using the rogues passage to kill Liliana that's also fine because then that means they're not emptying their hand for the prototype and then next turn we can play Jace and start plussing And no attacks from the opponents, I also don't mind seeing, but they are keeping up for mana, which is pretty suspicious. So they might want to transform their werewolves here, and they are using the recruiter, so they don't have any other flash werewolves, although they did just reveal Pack Guardian with the Duskwatch, so we know they have that in hand. Alright, Disciple of the Ring, but only two instance of sorceries in the graveyard but we can now plus or Liliana to hopefully find some more and we did perfect all right so I think we can finally start attacking and I think we do play out our disciple instead of our Jace just to control the board and let's see if we attack with the serpent or opponents can a double block if we tap down a Butcher, opponent can still double block the Serpent. So I think we just attack with our Flyer and keep the Serpent on defense. That way if the opponent goes to use their Rogue's Passage, we can tap the creature in response with the Disciple. And if they don't, then we just get to block with the Cryptic Serpent, so... Now we get to say go with two mana for the disciple and then the next turn we get to play the jace and a second planeswalker and then start plussing both every turn and start gaining an incremental advantage as our opponent plays a nissa which we cannot counter with our disciple so we'll let that happen opponent gets a forest and they were stuck on mana for a turn there so Let's see if the opponent wants to attack. Can of course also pump the Disciple, giving it plus one plus one. Opponent plays their land, we know about their pack guardian in hand. And they can cast it thanks to the Howler, which makes their creatures cheaper. Instead they play out a key to the city, which we could actually just counter here and I think we will because that could potentially be annoying and let's get rid of the least useful card in the graveyard in case we get a Jace Friends Prodigy to flash back our cards. Werewolves transform back. There's a Rise from the Tides. Only three for now but we can plus Liliana to maybe add some more. Alright we added one more. So the question here is, do we want to play Jace, or do we want to play the Rise from the Tides? I think we want to play Jace, just because that leaves more mana up for the Disciple, potentially. And it's not like 2-2s two are going to be great in this board. So let's plus, draw some cards. Drakehaven, actually I don't think we want, just because we don't have any Cyclers left. Would rather just draw the cyclers to go with the sniper and the curator. So let's keep attacking with our flyer. Don't think we want to do anything else here. And say go. Opponent with four cards in hand, so still pretty far for the prototype. 
And again, if they do go with the Rogue's Passage, we can tap the creature before it attacks. And do we see any attacks? Opponent also one land away from transforming Nissa, but we can pretty easily take it out with our Curator. Opponent playing out the Pack Guardian. Playing out Blossoming Defense on the Prototype. Interesting. Uh, let's just cycle the Illumination here and put a counter on the Prototype in response, I think. Just so that it doesn't trade with our Serpent. And yeah, let's keep that on top. Pay one. Draw into a Sensor. So the opponent does get to make a wolf by playing out the instant there, and they discard a land to get another wolf with the Pack Guardian. All right, so the opponent did empty their hand, but we drew yet another Planeswalker, which is nice here. One, two, three, four, five. Could cycle Sensor plus Liliana and then cast a Giant Rise from the Tides, although that would tap us out. So I think we'd rather just play the Opanixilis. So let's start by, I think, plussing our Liliana. See if we hit any more instants and sorceries. We hit one more, as well as a Cryptic Serpent, which we might reanimate next turn. With Jace, we could just kill a token, which I don't mind, since I don't think we need to draw a ton more cards. I would rather control the board a bit. And now the question is, do we want to play up Nixilus and kill something? Could kill the Recruiter so our opponent doesn't start drawing more cards. And then we can still keep up our Disciple plus maybe Sensor. Yeah, I think I like that. So let's take out the Recruiter. Keep attacking with our 4-4 four -four Flyer. And next turn, I think we can just tap everything down with the Disciple and attack for the win. Might even have been able to do that this turn. Let's see, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if we were able to kill the opponent last turn. We'll let the key to the city happen. Opponent doesn't have anything to discard to make their creatures unblockable. And nothing, so we can cycle. I don't think we need to shrink anything down. We can scry with the Sphinx, keep that on top. And then we start tapping down the opponent's creatures here. Alright, so might take a while here to tap everything down. And probably don't need to tap down this last one, but just to make sure. Alright. So managed to stabilize with our planeswalkers and then they kind of took over. And of course Disciple was also very good there. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, let's take a look at our opener which is interesting, pretty slow, two illuminations, can maybe cycle one of them, cast the other one, I think we try and keep, it's not great by any means, do need to draw into some stuff, but could definitely do worse. Alright, that's good, so now we can cycle the argument rather than the illumination here to start with. And we have already three cards to go with our Serpent. Opponent on Bands, Colors, plays Sylvan Advocate. Alright, so let's just cycle this end of turn. Try and find some action. 
and that's not particularly action. So let's play the island and say go. Represent counter spells and then end of turn we have to decide if we want to cycle both or maybe just one. Opponent hits us for two. So we are drawing a lot of lands here which was kind of the risk with our opening hand with four lands already. So let's definitely cycle one of them, see what we draw. Disciple of the Ring, interesting. So if we cycle another one, we still can't cast uh, Serpent next turn, but we could on turn four, which is a turn when we would be casting the Illuminations. I think we actually do cycle. Also means that if we draw something, we can play this turn, like a Fatal Push, perfect. And another Illumination. So yeah, let's say go. I guess we could just Fatal Push right now to play around Spell Quellers and the like. Since I do think I wanna take out the uh, Advocate, even though it's not great in the face of a Serpent next turn, so I guess we can just wait. Maybe get something juicier. But yeah, this situation is going to come up where the opponent attacks for two. And then the question is, do we take it or do we play out the Fatal Push? And now the opponent could have a Spell Queller. Alright, I guess we do still Fatal Push here. Alright, that worked. So no harm done. And Oath of Jace. Alright, that's fine. So the opponent might have a few Planeswalkers in their deck. Let's see what they discard here. Now the question is, do we cycle the Illumination? I don't think we do. We'd rather just run out the Serpents and then keep the Illumination for later. Alright, opponent discards a Reflector Mage, which is interesting, so that might mean they have another one in hand. Ooh, Drakehaven. This is interesting, so we can play a very cheap Cryptic Serpent here, which might get bounced by another Reflector Mage, which would be annoying. But then again, if we play Drakehaven, we can just end of turn cycle, which means the Reflector Mage would not be able to kill the token, basically. Well, actually, we can't play the Drakehaven cycle and make a Drake here, so I guess we do play out the Serpent. And then the plan is to play Drakehaven and then cycle and pay next turn, and then turn 6 we can think about the Disciple of the Ring. But again, I think our opponent probably has a Reflector Mage here. Unless they think we were on a blue-black control deck, in which case Reflector Mage might not be great, but yeah, there we go. Opponent has a second one, so they do get to bounce the Serpent, but it only costs us 3 mana, so it's not the end of the world. Alright, so now we can play out our Drakehaven and say go. And then we have to think about if we want to play out the Disciple next turn, since opponent could have removal spells like Declaration in Stone, which we would not be able to counter, and that's unfortunate. Reclamation Sage for our Drakehaven opponent being the fun police, but I, at least we'll get one token here, I guess. And draw into a Scarab Feast, which could have made another Drake. Why do you do this, opponent? So next turn, probably just gonna play out a uh, Serpent and then wait one more turn for the Disciple just to play it safe. Don't wanna have it killed by something like a Declaration in Stone, which your opponent could easily have. And there's a Sensor. Alright, so we can attack for two. Play out the Serpents on the cheap. And then still keep up Sensor and Scarab Feast for what it's worth. A 
I don't think we want to cycle it quite yet, as we might draw into some cycling payoff cards, but then again, if we cycle, we can draw into those payoff cards. So our opponent did have the declaration. We're calling all our shots today, so I think that's fine. Uh, opponent gives us a clue that we can sacrifice, but then we have the Disciple to stabilize. We're only taking four. And it's always nice when you can sack the clue the turn they declaration you. Another land is not great. And another Serpent, so I guess we can bait with the second Serpent since it does stabilize the board and we can wait another turn for the disciple just to have even more mana available just to play it even more safe and we do have the sensor in case they go for a well if they do have a planeswalker then playing the disciple now might be better but then again with the disciple we can easily just tap down the opponent's creatures and pressure the planeswalker with a serpent so Playing the Serpent's probably fine here. And then we can play the tapped Boneyard. And say go. So it looks like they don't have an answer to the Serpent. Alright, never mind. They have a cast out. Which can exile the Serpent here. Um, yeah, I guess that happens. So they can keep attacking us for four. I think I will cycle the Scarab Feast just to see if we can draw into maybe a removal spell here. Alright, Archfiend will also do. So that's gonna do a pretty good job here. And Rise from the Tides. Also very nice, but I think since these come into play tapped, the Archfiend does a better job of stabilizing. So let's actually let's see if this resolves. Our opponent could have an essence scatter. So let's just play this. All right, resolves. So now that we know it resolves and we cycle this, I feel safer attacking with the Drake because we were getting pretty low. Now they need an answer to the Archfiend. And then the Rise from the Tides is also going to be pretty epic. With a pretty stocked graveyard. These two cards kind of have a bit of friction between them. But again, the Cyclers, we have plenty of them. Opponent with yet another Declaration. But they're only going to hit us for one. And of course Declaration would have been great against Rise from the Tides as well, exiling all the tokens. And we can still crack the clue end of turn. And then I swear I'm gonna play out the Disciple finally. Another Reclamation Sage targeting the clue. But we can just sack it in response, so no big deal. Alright. So I think the opponent's out of removal, but we have a Disciple anyways, so we can hit for two with our drake, play disciple and then we have the shields up to go with our rise from the tides a turn later. And of course the 3-4 also just blocks the opponent's creatures so no need to tap them down with the ability. So the only thing that's gonna resolve for the opponent are creatures and I guess that's a creature. But we can also just tap it down. And we were on a lower life total with fewer creatures, so the opponent just gets a 5-5. So not the end of the world. Alright, I think I'll play the untapped land just in case we need the extra mana. And play a giant rise from the tides. And say go. 
basically you need to survive one turn and then we can kill them with all these zombies they already used both declarations so opponent moves to combat we'll tap down the 5-5 five five flyer here exile scarab feast and I think we don't tap anything else opponent attacks with both we will oblige and I don't think our opponent gets out of this and in fact our opponent does not get out of this so no need to tap anything down since the opponent did that for us could even run out the Liliana just to see what's on top maybe fuel or disciple some more since there's no creatures we can get back since the opponent exiled all of them so rude so let's plus just to see and then would have drawn a Jace and a sensor and then we can attack with our zombie horde funny that uh, Liliana makes a different zombie token I guess this one's from the desert and not from Innistrad all right sweet I want to thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this gameplay and as always have a nice day